Now, do you see what I mean about uh, knitting? If you got given that lot in a hurry to do something with, you are stuck. I'd like to crowd round and have a look at this card. Now, you just remember one thing and one thing only about steering by compass, and I don't care any, about any theories that you have, you just remember this one thing. There's magnets in that bowl and that little bit there, and they do not move. Just remember that. It's the ship, it's pinnacle, the mast, the whole ship. It moves round the compass. That compass, the magnets point in that direction north. All right, and they stay north. If you don't took okay, that off. Set up the rhythm running back today. Pull this back on. Use your body weight, put it on there. So all get on the same side. They get a full of supper, which they've enjoyed tremendously. They're all going to pull away hard, and what's going to happen? They're all going to fall flat on their backs, aren't they? Because there's not much wind in it, and they're all pulling hard. Who's doing this running back stay with this one? It's full of them. Come on! You want another Come one up on. here? Right. Vast heaving. You ever heard of these people called two and six? You'll be hearing of ad nauseam in the next fortnight. The way we do it is two, six, heave. 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 Right, hand the energy. Where you go? Pull it away. Easy. Beautiful. In two weeks, you can see a change, one hopes for the better, in a lot of these lads that we have. One of the joys, I think, is that you get people from all walks of life. I always quote the cruise where we had two from Buckingham Palace and two from Boston. Five minutes after they were on board and we put them in smocks, you couldn't tell which was which. You're going to get some people who are very intelligent. You're going to get some people who are thick. Um, the thicker ones will learn something perhaps from the intelligent ones and vice versa. We get people from Borstal and they might be sleeping above a police cadet. It's all part of the game. We don't try and segregate them. We have no choice in what we get. They come for the fortnight. Once they're in a the smock, they're all the same. Come on! Get yourself! Another life jacket and go! Right, that is the alarm bell, which you all heard. There is no other bell like it on board. If you hear those bells go again, it is for real. We only do this once, so you get up there quick. Let go, Starline. Oh, yesterday. Take off all but two sail ties. Well, I stepped to boat this schooner only yesterday. They took me in the Solent and they let me play. Thank you. They had these bits of canvas. Some were big, some were small. And the chief. Officer said we gotta hoist them all. Hey! No sooner they were up, they were down. What a fool! We sailed away with the sun in the west, I think. That's negative, we're just leaving the dock. But I was a galley rat, my head was stuck over the sink. <laughs> I didn't care what was going on. By the food, it stinks. <laughs> I got the Malcolm Dealer, Malcolm Dealer, Malcolm Dealer Blue. And that went fine, there were no problems. Having said that, you can see the problems, like that sail got caught around the boom. So, if all of you, as well as you watch leaders, always keep an eye open. And if you see a, sh a snag, shout, stop, fast heaving, whatever you like, make sure, because otherwise the sail gets ripped and they're about 2,000 pounds a time. Did you all understand what you were doing? By the time you've done the second one, anyway. OK, you're not watching on deck, are you? You are, right. Apart from the bridge crew, nip the others down, quick cup of tea, and then swap them over. Half the purpose of um, being on a sailing ship is to put the boys into a dangerous situation. That's all part and parcel of the game. They're going to go aloft in rough weather, because they have to. They man the ship, they do the work. There's no way we can get around it. You have to worry about them when they go aloft. 
But at the same time, you have one great thing is that they are scared, so they will hang on that tighter. But you need the element of fear and achievement, and both sometimes come together. And that's what we try to achieve here. We try very hard to hack a sense of safety into them. I'm forever at them to have an eye for themselves, an eye for the ship, a hand for themselves, a hand for the ship. We do go at them all the time. We're continually at them about safety. And again, it's quite surprising. You can see how much more interest they're taking in their own self-preservation and looking after other people, not just letting something go, but having a good look around to make sure that before they let that go, somebody else isn't going to get hurt. I've got this thing about heights. There's only one way to get over it, and that's to go up there. It's the only thing you can do, just go up there. I wasn't looking forward to it. When we first got on board and we had to go up there, I didn't want to do it. So, but once we've done it a couple of times, we just crawl out there, don't think about it. Can't enjoy it now, actually. I'm scared of heights, but I'm not fear of going up. It's when I'm up there, I'm pretty shaky up there. I've only ever been out there once, and uh, I won't go out there again. We have to keep this ship tidy for obvious reasons. It's quite nice to half take at the moment. We had this weekend when we got a lot of engineering done, a lot of work, and the upper deck's a mess. It's covered in oil and grease and dirt. And we're trying to get that up, and because we haven't had a happy hour down here for a week, the inside of the ship is as well. The way I like to play this, I'll tell you all where you're going in a minute. We normally do it for an hour. If you're finished in half an hour and I'm happy, you can have the other half hour sitting on the stern smoking or whatever you'd like to do. If it takes you an hour and a half, that's up to you. Happy hour, which is probably a misnomer if ever there was one, is a cleaning routine whereby everybody has a position which he goes to at nine o'clock every day for an hour and spends an hour cleaning that part of the ship. We attach tremendous importance to this because with 55 people living in close company, if it starts to get dirty, we end up looking like a pigsty very quickly indeed. We teach them really how to be a housewife. We scrub decks and we show them how to do it properly. And it's all a bit of a nausea. The funny thing about it is that they really quite enjoy doing it. There's a, a definite sense of achievement by the end of the week where they can see that an area that they have been cleaning has come up considerably from what it was at the beginning of the week. In the mornings, during a happy hour, if anybody's bed is not made up, their bedding is hoisted to the top of the mast until they get the idea to make their bed up. That's where I'm going. Who's that? It's a cook's. <laughs> Not me, got told to do it. How's your head, Mr. Wright? 212, sir. Thank you. T, two, T. The biggest two, trouble we have on board is seasickness. It, to a great extent, can affect the enjoyment that a person gets out of the cruise. I've been sick 17 times in one day. The main thing is not to let it get you down. Once you start being sick, just get hold of a rope and start pulling it and you don't feel it not so much. You know, when you're seasick, you're over the side and you can see no end to it whatsoever. It just tastes revolting. <laughs> I've only ever been sick straight after a meal or anything like that. It comes up semi-digested, you know, pretty foul. There are a lot of boys and it shows out in their character. You get a boy working in the galley, like we had this trip. And he was working in the galley, being seasick, going back in the galley and carrying on. And that's, that shows all the guts. Um, we haven't had much wind yet. Those of you that have been seasick, you will probably find you're cured. There are usually about two that suffer throughout the fortnight. The rest of you will probably find you're over it now. We're trying to get a quick start on that if you can as we're going in. A quick up one. Inboard by that back. Okay, I'll move out of it, sir. Half a stern port. Half a stern port on. We'll reach it, sir. Hard a starboard. We made Jersey one sunny afternoon. Thank you, Peter. And for 24 hours, you ready? I called the tune. Well, I liked Jersey, but we left too soon. 